tonight on Red Eye. <sighs> Coming up on Red Eye, what was Luke Dobbs doing last night while the rest of us were catching up on our DVRs? The world's most electrifying newsman hits London for 24 hours of gripping and ripping. Plus, is the president having second thoughts about getting a pony instead of a clown for Joe Biden's birthday party? It was a tough debate, but the, the main concern I have is making sure that we get it right. That, that's my main priority. And finally, it's an exclusive preview of the next Fast and the Furious movie. But did producers spend too much money on The Rock and not enough money on special effects? Our expert panel weighs in next. None of these stories on Red Eye tonight. And now let's welcome our guests. Well, her initials are KT, but they should be QT because she's hideous. Here tonight with his National Review reporter Catherine Timpf. That started a little late. She's got more waves in a surf competition as Joe Nosotinsky and her stupid hand. And he makes Eeyore seem relentlessly upbeat. It's TV's Andy Levy. And it looks like Dr. Frankenstein took on Peter Gallagher for his client. Sitting right next to me, actor, comedian, and writer Kurt Metzger. He also hosts the Great Race Wars podcast with some guy whose name I won't mention. <laughs> I know. I know. That's the first story. I mentioned Rod Smith is not here. Should his gain bring him shame? On Wednesday, Giancarlo Stanton signed the biggest contract for an American athlete in history, $325 million over 13 years. That's a lot of money. The 25-year-old Stanton is a baseball player, I'm told, and already one of the best in the match. But isn't the money a bit much? Maybe. But we've done the math. You will average $69,000 a day. For the next 13 years, that's way more than the national average annual income in this country. Is there part of that that is almost embarrassing to you? Stanton admitted it's not fair for him to make so much money. Is there part of that that is almost embarrassing to you? <laughs> embarrassing to me? Uh, <laughs> not, not exactly. The, this isn't like... Uh, a lottery ticket and and peace out. All right now, uh, people are thinking it like that. Now you win the lottery, you quit your job and you you go live wherever you want to live and and you call it a day. Now this is the start of new work and a new job. Hmm, I was mistaken. Stanton is now richer than Scrooge McDuck's rectum, and he celebrated Monday night at a Miami hotspot, aren't they all? With a twenty thousand dollar bottle of champagne, which of course he didn't have to pay for. Anyway, nobody was more shocked by the size of Stanton's contract than his cat. He's 25, and he just signed a 13-year, $325 million contract extension. The richest contract in sports history. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Kurt, you look like you watch a lot of sports, but don't play any. Well, you're half right. <laughs> don't watch or play them. Should he be embarrassed by that incredible sum of money? I, no. I, I want to know who the – I couldn't find the name of the reporter yeah. who asked that question. I want to know what he writes for. Yeah, he's, from, he's with the nation. It's got to be Pravda or something. <laughs> yeah. But I, that's such a, a – like the guy's voice when he said it to him was like accusatory yes. almost <laughs> on top of it. Yeah. But I, if you're lefty, this is – Profit sharing, like mm -hmm. he generates this income instead of just the owners getting it. Right now, a worker's getting it. I don't yeah. understand wh how that would upset you. Yeah, unless you have a problem with just how sports work in general. Yeah, it's a great. It's a reporter going. That's a lot of money. It should go to teachers. <laughs> 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 to get it. And that's <laughs> totally a reporter who spent probably thousands of dollars on like sports tickets in yeah. the past. Yes, exactly. To right. Games and events. Are they events? <laughs> I think they're called matches. events. Yeah. They're matches. Baseball matches. Cat. Catherine, unfortunately for women, they don't give big contracts for best laundry or vacuuming, <laughs> which I think is sexist. Well, yeah, everything's sexist. I think that's the real problem here. Um, well, I mean, I don't know what this, this reporter really expected him to say, that he would say yes. Like, yes, I work very hard, sacrifice a lot. I've been very successful, and I'm so embarrassed <laughs> yeah. by that. And I hope he just heard me defend him so that he'll give me hundreds of thousands of, mm -hmm. of dollars because I can't make any money for all the laundry that I do Aww. all day long. I feel bad for you. Yeah, you must be you. poor. Yeah, I am a little bit. <laughs> okay, yeah. yes, by his standards. <laughs> Andy, you'll never have the success of someone like this young man, but you have the grudging respect of your cats, which is something. Yeah. Is he worth all that money? Is he worth so much money that it almost makes you seem like you don't exist? No, first of all, you can't put a, a price tag on the respect of the cats. <laughs> That's true. So... <laughs> 
Maybe I'm actually richer, Greg. Yeah. Tell yourself that. No, in your, I, I, oh, I do. In your I do. cheap Velcro jacket. Yes. <laughs> Velcro got my jacket. It's, no it's got a zipper there. Yeah. It's a pattern. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's it the my... high-tech zipper technology. Yes, it does. Um, look, this dude is a phenomenal talent, and besides that, he's a great team guy, always hustles, works his ass off. If you're going to give an athlete that much money, you couldn't do much better than him. Mm. His stats are amazing. Also, if you're going to ask anyone if they're embarrassed, ask the owner. Yeah. The owner paid that. Like, what is the player? Nobody is going to say, yeah, no, don't, nah. don't pay me that much money. It's nah. embarrassing. <laughs> Nobody in the world, even a, a writer for the nation yeah. would not say, no, don't pay me that much money. It's yeah. embarrassing. They would, they would take the money and then pretend to be, feel yeah. bad about it. Well, you would say that, wouldn't you, Mr. Levy? I don't understand. Neither do I. Joanne, uh, Santa doesn't appear to be married. Uh, have you figured out how you will meet him? Uh, I'm going to be taking a lot more vacations to Miami, <laughs> yeah. although I don't know that I would want to like seriously date or even marry him because I can't be a priority for 13 years. That's true. That's a long time. Yes. Uh, well, that's when you date somebody else. Yeah. yeah. You understand you he's on the road doing. most of the yeah. time. Yeah. You're just at uh, home with your uh, girls going yeah. to the club. Wait, do I not tell him? No, of no. course not. No, you don't want to tell him. <laughs> okay. Uh, listen, I thought it was a very stupid question, but he gave a very good answer. Uh, the question should have been, is that daunting? Mm -hmm. to, to know that you're getting that much money. Yes. Are you nervous? Because it is a job. Yeah. So that's a lot of pressure on you, knowing you're making that kind of money and, and good work is expected of you. And yeah. you just hope you don't screw it all up. People are going to be watching for a scandal for him. They're going to try to find mm. some nudies or something. To, and know. there will be, because there always right. is. There you know what? He'll be nudies. fine because he's a man. Right, yes. You know what's right, important, right. though, is that athletes like this are a, 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 they're a great janitor of profit for cheesy items. Do you know what I mean? If without athletes, you don't have those, those right, you yeah. know, all the ridiculous. Yeah, Jesus. No, but you go, into, like, if you ever watch Cribs, right. I don't even know if it exists anymore. Whatever it's at the a athletes out of Cribs, it's always designed by the same person. Right, Everything yeah. is white, and they always have a room for trophies and a pool table and they don't need right, but they right. feel like I got to have a sculpture over there and that's how much is it it's a million dollars okay because I, I I can do that <laughs> and they do that and they have like six cars and then they're broke yeah that's yeah. how it works and they get like gold-plated stoves and yeah. then they discover that gold melts yes exactly so they keep replacing it <laughs> they always have a game room yeah. And they always and they always invite their friends over, and they all yeah. kind of hang around awkwardly. Yeah. yeah, watching two guys play Xbox. Exactly. Yeah. They will. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. By the way, don't you think maybe nudies benefit females a lot more than men? <laughs> they do. Because there's a lot of careers based on some nudies getting leaked. <laughs> That's true. Women, and a lot of like you know, yeah. Screech didn't. That didn't help him. <laughs> no, it didn't help Screech. <laughs> well, kinda. No one was talking about him anymore. Yeah, but you know, we all decided to stop talking about him after we yeah. saw the video. When we when I saw that video, I said I'm never. We're Ever. talking about him right now. Because she said his name. Yeah. <laughs> not in a good way. No, it wasn't like, yeah. It's I really not talking about not like, brilliant. Like, that's the saving grace of Kim Kardashian when yeah. somebody trash you. Like, well, she's a brilliant marketer. Yeah. She yeah. had a vagina on that tape. Brilliant marketing. Mm -hmm. Look, uh, yeah, and it didn't help Ray J, did it? No, not at all. I don't even know who he is. I just remember he's part <laughs> of the whole thing. Porn doesn't, it's not good for men. It's, it's not good. They, they're paid terribly. Yeah. They're paid terribly. A lot more serious. That's, you know, nobody talks about yeah. the wage gap in porn. Yeah. Nobody ever does. We'll they talk about a lot of gaps, but not that one. Okay. All right. <laughs> They're up in arms and sounding the alarm. I don't know what I'm talking about. They shop at the Gap. I'm, of course, talking about the great Canadian band Nickelback, who have finally addressed world events, including the unrest in Ferguson, with their new song, Edge of a Revolution. See, they put revolution in there because it's a protest song. Nobody's done that before. That was really <laughs> smart. If you haven't heard this yet, I envy you for getting to experience it for the very first time. Chest line, freedom scribbled on your side. Headline, New York Times, standing on the edge of a revolution. Hey, hey, just obey your secret safe with the NSA. In God we trust, or the CIA, standing on the edge of a revolution. It's like jocks doing a musical. You're not supposed to do this. Break it down for me, Chad. And how we gonna get there? Revolution! What do we want? Oh, we want change! Standing on the edge of a revolution! Yes, when I want my revolution, I go to Nickelback. <laughs> Frontman Chad Kroger explained why he felt the need to write this awesome, vital song telling Yahoo Music, a terrible sentence. You turn on CNN and it's like, wow. 
we'd have it on for 15 minutes and we'd have to shut it off because it was so depressing. That's a total stab. <laughs> they're just sick of hearing about the Malaysian plane. For <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or maybe they just don't like Anderson Cooper because they're homophobes. Anyway, the state of affairs in the world these days is so dismal, and I think that's where the song definitely came from. Well, rock on, you golden god. Anyway, I prefer their older stuff. Of course. <laughs> Those never get old. <laughs> Kurt, you were pumping your fist while we were playing the Nickelback. Yeah. Uh, does it make you want to protest? Well, I think it was lovely of them to write that for Ferguson. It's, yeah. just, a, it's just a shame that no black people will ever hear that song <laughs> because it's a Nickelback. Song. Exactly. So, no, they have the a huge. They have a huge black following. Clint Black, <laughs> the late Karen Black. It's you know what? The Black Keys. I'm gonna keep going until you. Yeah. Black. black. Sure they <laughs> I didn't see or hear that song until just now, and I'm upset. Are you upset? I mean, Are you angry? It was just, it was so embarrassing. It was so do there's nothing worse than like a dorky thing that they clearly thought they were being super badass when they did it. Like, yeah, the government, and we're gonna use. It. Oh, did you hear that S word? We just used the S word, and the ah, kids are gonna think we're so crazy. But it was it was put. I think putting revolution in the title revolution. was was uh, yeah. yeah. That was like that's just in case you don't know. Yeah. They're serious. I'm embarrassed for them. All their families. Do they have families? Still? No, they don't. That they go back. It does not have a family. Um, this song is actually not titled Revolution. It's Revolution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that is my biggest problem. That's what's so deplorable no. about this. They should be executed for their diction. Oh. Yeah, so I think it's a little strong. I think they should be uh, um, lectured. I expect say lecture. from something that was inspired by CNN. Um, um, that's really yeah, that's beautiful. Beautiful. They almost have like a Nike ad right there. Like they're just this close. close. Yes. To, like, yeah. They, you know what, I, Andy, I know you are going to defend Chad and, and, and Nickelback. Yep. Go for it. I have only one thing to say about this. Great job, lads. <laughs> uh, everything you always needed in a rock and roll song about revolution is here. Drawing out the word revolution so that it's practically five syllables. Yes. Uh, saying revolution instead of shun. Yes. Classic rock move. Uh, can you think of another uh, revolutionary anthem that wouldn't sound out of place at a strip club? No, you can't. <laughs> no, you're you right. Could, you could listen to this in a strip club with no problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And what more of an anthem would you want than that? No, I don't know. But you know what? I, I always imagine when, how do things happen? And I imagine when they, so they were watching CNN and they're like, damn, man, things are bad out there. It's time for us to do something really important. And so when they were done doing this, they probably sat and they thought, this is going to, this is a, this is a game changer for them. Yeah. They actually believed yeah. this was going to be huge and, they, and it was going to be talked about everywhere, yeah. but not just red eye. Come back. Yes. On, a, yeah. on a scale of awful, how do you compare it to uh, 41 shots by Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> of like brutally bad. Every yeah. band has their yeah. Like, yeah. revolution song. So, you know, Hurricane by Bob Dylan was kind of a pretty yeah, good song. Yeah, that was, that was a long you know? time ago. This song rhymed NSA and CIA. Yeah, that was <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah. That was guy. good. Well, the, the really problematic part of this whole thing, though, mm. is their music video is promoting violence in schools. These kids are then flipping desks. They're throwing papers, paper cuts everywhere. It's awful. You should be the spokesperson for the Family Research Council. The way you did that. You, you, yeah. you, look. But the yes, kids, exactly. I, don't, I, I don't even blame them for that. Kind of like, isn't that like an awful Pink Floyd song that people love about uh, uh, another need brick need in the wall or something? Need need education. education, yes. You absolutely do need education. Yeah, yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah. Please that was, shut up. That was a Grand destructive party. protest Still song. Baby. It really was. It's just the, best, music. the best thing about this was in the interview that they said to him, do you think you'll address more political content in the future? And his answer was, you know, I'm just as surprised as anybody else when something comes out of my mouth. <laughs> that was literally <laughs> his answer. That, yeah, that was his I answer. You know what? I'm beginning to fall in love with got Chad. You, got I am. Appreciate I'm falling in love with Chad. Great job, lads. I'm playing Appreciate it tomorrow. Again. I'm playing it tomorrow. All right. Instead of baking pie, they're getting high. What happens when three grannies try pot for the first time? Grab your jazz cigarettes, hepcats, and join me down on. <laughs> ah, updated music for you. In Washington, where recreational weed is legal, the fried folks at Cut.com enlisted three delightful older women to puff the magic dragon for the first time ever. Stand by one. So yeah, you can gently just, you can stop lighting it. You can like go the lighter. You need more. I need more. Oh, you need more. Do it like you mean it. <laughs> she meant it. <laughs> 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 
I mean, <laughs> like they're, 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 they're not too young to have never heard of pot before. Yeah. The Wait, what? The pot? Uh, We're not done yet. I want to see if we get more. How, how did it? How did it turn out? Did it work? I can feel some tingle in my brain. Can I you? feel like I'm smiling. I could go iron now for days. <laughs> I love to iron. Oh. You do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're kind of weird. I see a lot of benefits for it. I totally lost track of what you were talking about. <laughs> I'm feeling like I really don't care <laughs> if I understand even. Hmm, <laughs> would they ever do it again? Yeah, I would do it again if I can get this bag of chips open. Oh, <laughs> somebody open her chips. Well, they were so stunned, they each ate an entire bag of Werther's Originals and then closed down an old country buffet. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's see what happens when three cats try pot. More cats. <laughs> I guess that's what happens. We know the answer. All right, Catherine. How many, you know, people often talk about marijuana being a gateway drug. In this case, what would, could this lead to? Flomax, Lipitor, Lanesta? I am concerned that it will lead to gateway videos <laughs> where we'll have grandmas doing other drugs, like watch three grandmas score a crack rock for the first time and snort it off a gun. Yeah. Although that'd be way more interesting because, you know, intervention I've seen every episode of. I love Heroin, that show. Heroin ones are kind of boring. You know, there was one weed one. I was like, are you serious? Now the people are like, I've been up on meth for 14 years. Yeah. That's what I want to watch. Now the best, the best intervention ever, the computer screen cleaner inhaler. Allison, yes. Allison, yes. Christy, 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 the Christy yeah. girl with the, who did the math thinking with God and walking down the street having me. She's the one that was like, I'm on a permanent good one and like had all the stickers <laughs> on her face. I, I don't know, but Google intervention it. was uplifting and depressing at the same time. It's yeah. fun to get high to is what it yeah, is. Exactly. <laughs> what do, you, um, do you think this uh, is necessary to put grannies on pot? It's I, you know, I feel less bad about blowing smoke in my grandma's ear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> she likes it. I tell everyone she likes it, and you see. It's adorable. Yeah. Um, you know, not as adorable as if it were children smoking pot, but you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. so, Society frowns upon that. Grannies. And so do I, America, just to make that clear. So don't write yeah. your letters. Hey, uh, Joanne, when you're that age, you think you'll give up and just try every drug? Can't hurt, right? I never say never, mm -hmm. but I'm never actually getting old, so no, I don't know. Yes, exactly. Uh, it's funny. So now we have two kinds of videos out there, right? We have hoaxes, mm -hmm. and then we have the bastardization of our elderly. Yes, that is and true. And while both are morally deplorable, mm -hmm. uh, I, I kind of like this one a little more because yeah. you don't have to apologize. Yeah, afterwards. that's true. That's true. Unless one of them had a bad, if they had a bad <laughs> yeah, trip, one of though. Freaking yeah, out. that's what I thought, Andy. If one of them had a bad trip, it could have right. been a problem. Yeah, there's only one. There's only there's only one reason that would. There's only one reason. That that, that wouldn't have happened on this video. Mm -hmm. It's completely fake. Really? Right. Wait, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see plenty of high no. grandmas. They were not the smoking pot. You know, the they whole were? thing, if you, oh, I can't get the bag of chips open, come on. Yeah, I yeah, can't believe well, you I, I have a hard time believing they were so innocent about pot. They're not that old. Yeah. yeah. And when they were young, pot was pretty popular. Uh, just so the yeah, fact you know. that, oh, by the way, that they can take hits off a bong without coughing. Yeah. Th that's that's yeah. the first time they've ever tried pot. Yeah, that one was at it for like 10 yeah. whole seconds. Well, that's so. Sucks. Why do we do the story? I'm just guessing. That I'm no, I, can't, I just don't. I think they gave him a very small amount because if you're going to. Pot is so powerful these right, days. These are crisis actors. Probably the same ones that were in Newton. <laughs> yeah. Newtown. Oh, my God. Uh, that's what they do for a living. They all go right. around faking things. I don't believe it at all. Okay, you make me sick. Coming up, mimes. What aren't they telling us? But first, Mattel apologizes for making Barbie stupid. Well, of course she's stupid. She's a plastic doll. I'm tired of this applause. She knows suitors, but not computers. Yes, Barbie's getting slammed this week on the internet, like everybody else, except she's a doll. In a recent book called Barbie, I Can Be a Computer Engineer, well, it is fiction, she's portrayed as a clueless programmer who unleashes a virus on her friend's computer. Can't do anything without the help from a man. It's time for our 15,000th edition of Is This Sexist?
find my other sign. <laughs> Just showing in case you old people are at home and are looking for uh, something to stare at. This is fun. All right, from the beginning, the book implies Barbie is only capable of certain aspects of her project. Her sister says, your robot puppy is so sweet. Can I play your game? Barbie responds, laughing, I'm only creating the design ideas. I'll need Stevens and Brian's help to turn it into a real game. <laughs> Steven and Brian are boys. Cute ones, no less. Especially Brian. <laughs> In response to internet outrage, Amazon pulled the book and Mattel caved, saying, We believe girls should be empowered, hate that word, to understand that anything is possible, please, and believe they live in a world without limits. Come on. We apologize that this book didn't reflect that belief. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mattel has decided to introduce a new Barbie. Take a look. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. I don't fall for that stuff. All right, Tim, was this book sexist or not sexist enough? <laughs> Both. No, I don't know. I, I saw an article saying that this was very, very serious because mm -hmm. there was a survey where they surveyed kids that played with Barbie and kids that played with Mr. Potato Head. And the kids that played with Barbie didn't have as high of ambitions for their career. Right. I feel like what you want to be when you grow up, when you're still playing with Mr. Potato Head, probably not really that much of an indicator. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a dog. Yes. Right? As <laughs> yeah. you know, so uh, I don't think it's really that indicative. Plus, Barbie. Iggy Pop would have loved you. Oh, I don't know how to take that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Kurt, I don't know what that meant. Why are uh, girl toys so boring? Like, I had a, I had a Transformer, you know, yeah. and then I never asked it if it thought I was fat, and I, I didn't aspire to anything. No, you didn't. Like, yeah. I, I mean, is that, is that, like... Did you guys play with Barbies? And is yeah, that, no, I played yeah. with dog stuffed animals. But, dog stuffed animals? but I don't know. It, it is actually. I played with Klaus Barbie. But, like, why are girl toys, like, aspirational? Is that because girls are no, it's, no, it's insulting to women to Barbie. assume that they're, uh, they're affected by a right. toy. Like, I mean, I, okay, I, I played with army men, and yeah. I, I didn't become a warmonger, or I didn't even join the army. I had smashed up derby. Yeah. I had right. never wrecked a car. I had a stretch Armstrong, and I've never stretched a man unless he asked. Well, I don't get that, why they but put that on But this is a book. Man. You don't play with a book. You read a book. And children are not going to understand the theme or right. the nuances. It took me right. this years. Looks like the patriarchy in my child's book. I mean, yeah. it's really an example of hack writing. Is really, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. really bad. Exactly. You should have been hired to touch it up well, a bit. Like, I don't know why Barbie that has to become a science. Like Barbie was just supposed to be a fun whore. That's the <laughs> that's the fantasy. <laughs> really fun yeah, whore, fun nice whore. Whore. I had no it's idea. Not, like I, you know, I don't get any. Of that. I don't get making Barbie fatter. I yeah, right. they're giving her stretch marks now. They're doing all sorts of things. Yeah, go fat girl. Yeah. My fantasies, I'm fat. Thank you. I, I, yeah, I think that's what I, I think. It's it's insulting to girls to think that they are too, so vulnerable that they can right. be affected by a toy that they're going to forget about in two years when they discover Justin Bieber and another toy. Andy, you are silent on this. Is it because you're actually sitting on a Barbie? Uh, <laughs> honestly, I don't even know anymore. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the woman who wrote this book spent ten years at Microsoft. She was an editor and usability designer. Uh -huh. She says her instructions were to write about Bobby Barbie as a designer, not an engineer, which is what she did. Did yes. Oh. She does say though that she regrets not making one of the coders. That was uh, Steve and yes. Brian. Yeah. That she regrets not making one of them female. I think they can solve this whole thing by just saying that Steve is actually transgender. They yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great yeah. 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 solution. Yeah, that, that covers a lot of bases. Yeah. They really got to stop telling kids uh, that the sky's the limit. I, yeah. I don't know why you well, think it's good the for them. We uh, need to tell these girls that you can't have it all. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can't yeah. Be a race what kind of sociopath and an astronaut. thinks they should yeah, have Barbie it all? She was actually already all of those things. How many careers does she need to exceed? She, at before I mean, yeah. everybody wanted to be a Barbie before this. And she's only dating one man. Yes. This is the thing about kids. <laughs> People really think kids like go to the top because someone tells them they're great. Right? Yeah, because that's not why. It's the opposite. You yeah. do that in spite of people. Right. Yes, that's how successful. Exactly. You know, studies. We've talked about this. Studies. Uh, people with the lowest self-esteem do better in school, yeah. and the people with the highest self-esteem right. are in jail well, because good, they feel yeah. they don't have to follow the rules. Or on TV. Or yeah. hosting late night shows. But these people, they think that validation is the same as empowerment all the time, and yeah. it's really not. Mm -hmm. That is such a wow. So.
Someone else said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Mullins said that to me. <laughs> anyway, well, I'm just more angry. I mean, you know what I'm angry about? That everybody continues to apologize. The scolding and the shaming and the apologizing is now so constant. Why don't we just all have a blanket apology? The whole world. Did you see a guy with the shirt that landed that spaceship on the. Oh, cool, yeah. Oh. We, we I did don't that. Even we know did, what we, he did. did we, all I heard about was the shirt. Yeah. That his female friend horrible. made, so he was like Seinfeld with the pirate shirt on TV. Exactly. And then he gets blasted. And by the way, th those he images, cries. Those images he save women's that. lives. Yes, yeah. Because they he desensitize cried. us to TNA, mm -hmm. which is what you want. Mm -hmm. But he wore a shirt with boobs. <laughs> he wore a shirt with boobs on it, with sort of boobs on we, it. You know, we did this story. We stretched the story over three days last week. We now four. No, no. All right. Yeah. Well, next we're going to talk about Gruber. Just kidding. Coming up, a straight white male apologizes for being a straight white male. Of course, he's a professor. But first, a word from our sponsor. Tonight's sponsor is Soda Popcorn. Do you feel like you're paying too much money at the movie theater for soda and popcorn? Are you wasting too much time chewing and drinking? Fear not. Now you can save time and money with Soda Popcorn. It's soda soaked in popcorn. It's bad for you. Should the hens only be men's? The University of Delaware newspaper, they have them there, will no longer refer to their women's sports teams as lady hens. It's the subject of tonight's Is This Sexist? We have two of them today. Wow, this is my lucky day. This week, the newspaper editors announced they were, quote, disposing of a discriminatory term, explaining that, quote, referring to our women's sports teams as the lady hens, while we refer to our men's teams as the hens, which is weird in and of itself, <laughs> suggest, because hens are female, suggest that men's teams lay claim to true henship and to the true embodiment of athleticism. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the University of Tennessee women's basketball team is fighting to keep its Lady Vols name Vols. after the, Vols, eh, whatever. After the school announced that all squads, men's and women's, should be called Tennessee Volunteers, <laughs> <laughs> says one defender of the status quo. This is a long story. Gee whiz, people. <gasps> Being a lady means something so much fiercer than anything that our society deems as the definition of lady. Meanwhile, in Russian boys athletics. Ooh, this will be cool. back and mocked him some more and in Russian they're bilingual there anyway ping pong who, who knew it was that exciting all right Kurt is it sexist for teams to include lady and isn't it weird that a man's team is called hands that's two questions I apologize yeah, to be the roosters, right? You change yeah, the yeah, the roosters. yeah. Yeah, I don't. Well, you know, when I read this in the in the little map they gave me, I I, I had to take some time to wrap my head around caring about any of this. <laughs> but uh, I don't understand. Listen, Lady Vols, I need that title there because I don't want to accidentally watch women's basketball. I need that to <laughs> help it's steer a, me you know what it is? It's a trigger. Basketball. It's a trigger warning. <laughs> Do you, have you heard about trigger warnings? Yeah. Yeah, where they put it so like we're we're going to talk about something horrible. Right. So basically, Lady is a trigger warning for for basketball for you <laughs> well, it's just I mean I don't I, I don't watch WNBA like I don't care like yeah. I don't see what the big deal is but I, I never understand big deal. I never All understand right. uh, change yeah. like what the big deal is about on the other end changing these names but I'm not like a sports fan so yeah. it doesn't mean anything to me so then stop talking about it it's like, the, <laughs> it's like the Barbie thing I think it's a big deal that they're thinking that a team name would be so harmful to a young woman exactly. that it would actually Hurt impact them. her life words hurt I have faith in young Young women, mm -hmm. college age adult women, mm -hmm. that they could overcome what their sports team name was and still succeed. And I think that's what real feminism is, not Jezebel feminism. Oh, which. ladies and gentlemen. Jezebel. Mm. <laughs> All right. Our viewers at home don't know what you mean, exactly. but you are affecting three or four people. <laughs> Joanne, is, this, is, there a <laughs> is there a fair solution here yes. for the fair sex? Uh, get rid of all sports. No, good. It's barbaric and it promotes competition culture. It's That's all right. I found a new word. What did you call it? Competition culture. That's nice. It's a yeah. culture. We yeah. all hate culture. I hate, yes. They if, offend lots of people. Uh, yes. Um, you know who Lady hasn't hurt? 
What? Lady Gaga. No, true. Lady Liberty. Mm-hmm. They're doing well. But what about the man Gaga? He yeah. Probably has <laughs> yeah. And what about Mr. the song Gaga. Lady? <laughs> <laughs> It's happening again. All right. Um, Andy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's important here? History, herstory, gender equality? Is it really Barbie, Eric, as Joanne says? <laughs> Does Joanne, do you say that? <laughs> it's Barbie, really Eric. That. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, look, as someone whose name is an anagram for Lady Envy, mm -hmm. this is a very important issue for me. Right. Um, oh, your name. I get it. <laughs> Thanks. No, I don't. What? I don't get it. Uh, it really is an anagram for my name. Oh, I had no idea. No. Um, I do think I That's think it's important. I think Lady Gaga should just be Gaga. Yeah. I think that Stick Song should just be. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, <laughs> just listen to it one more time. All right, now let's hear your version. I got it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's better. Yeah, this is going nowhere fast, Andy. Do you have a point to make? I really don't. I think this is, I think the lady name is silly and archaic, but I think if the people at the school like it, they should keep it. I All think right. so long as they still okay. get funding and win championships, doesn't matter. All right. Well. And the Lady Vols is a, that's a huge tradition. Yeah. So right. keep it. Yeah. Okay. I just think, again, yeah, if words don't hurt people. Physical violence hurts people. people. There's violence everywhere. No, we're having rape and violence. And they you only do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's violence. Violence. They only do this violence. women and minorities. They only do this. Mm. These words hurts people. They're not saying anything about being called hens hurting the men. Mm -hmm. So it is sexist. What do you oh, say about redskins? Do you say change redskins or keep it? I think redskins is a bad name. Yeah. I don't think it hurts anybody, but it's. Right, right. I think it's a bad. I think I, the name. I really hope we drop audio on that. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's going to be. I don't like the name. But 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 because I don't like something, does that mean it's got to go away? Well, I just like because I was like, hey, change it. But I'm not a fan of the football, right? Like yeah. People that light are into it. Yeah, they're gonna well, kill you. So they've almost ironically become a tribe of natives protecting just, their natives. Yeah, exactly. I'm That's true. People making jokes about, like changing it to the potato. I'm sick of hearing yeah. that joke. Yeah, I, yeah. That. I know. Every so take Redskins yeah. as a potato. I uh, get that. I get that a lot. And you know, it, she it's just not said true. It. I did. No one heard it. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've had enough of well, all they of you. Though they just changed the name to potato. Or potato, <laughs> potatoes on the jersey, because uh -huh. the red skin is also a potato. There you go. All right, well, thanks. We'll never do that again. <laughs> all right, we got to take a break. Women in heels. When we come back. By the way, you know my book. It's still out. It's called Not Cool. Order it Amazon.com. Autograph copy. Ggutfeld.com. Back in a moment. But first, here's what's coming up tomorrow on the Independence. Ah. Cow, I stopped eating it. All right. <laughs> it's true. I just was telling them how I never knew that a veal was actually a baby cow. I thought it was a separate animal. <laughs> Men are chumps for ladies in pumps. <laughs> yes, they'll heal for heels. A new study out of France whoa, finds that higher shoes lead to more helpful dudes. In an experiment, men were more willing to pick up a dropped glove if the woman was wearing three and a half inch heels. And they were also quicker to chat up a laugh at the bar if she was sporting stilettos over flats. Researchers suggest, suggest that because so many models are pictured in heels, men associate them with sexual intent. Yeah, that's why. Researchers are so stupid. Kurt. Yeah, I, well, uh, the first part of that, the, yes. the uh, helping them out. Yeah. That's just if you have any experience with women, you, like, they're on stilts. So yes. So as an instinct, yes. can you help me out? I mean, heels is something that you would just do. Exactly. As far as approaching them, I, I almost never look at a woman's feet at all. I'm not I, into feet like that, so I, I don't know. I find them despicable. Feet are gross. They're yeah. at the bottom of your body. The things that they see if they had eyes, it's <laughs> disgusting. That's why, that's why you don't have eyes on your feet, Kurt, because the things you would see, you just kill yourself. I, you don't? <laughs> I don't know what um, happens. But I, I'm used to just helping. Just any time someone's in heels and you're with them, they're like, can you help me out? Yeah. Like, Would you help a things? transgendered male? I if have. You, good. Excellent. Because <laughs> I have a job for you later. <laughs> Catherine, uh, do you get more attention when you're in heels? I only wear heels pretty much when I'm sitting in a chair. Like this chair <laughs> yes. or my office at work because I can't really walk in them. Mm -hmm. But when I walk from the subway to my apartment in Harlem, people are still like, come over here and offering to, I assume, help me out. <laughs> yes. So, you know, Isn't it nice? I wouldn't take them up 
on their offer, though. Don't, mm -hmm. If they say, can I help you into your apartment when, you know, with things. That's rape culture. To yeah, that is. that I couldn't just assume I could walk up to any stranger. <laughs> that's true. I apologize for insulting you there. Okay. Joanne, is this why you only wear Uggs to the bar? Yeah. You yeah. go to a bar to drink, not to chat. Yeah, that's Come on. That's true. Uh, yeah, drunk. Okay, so, uh. I, I love wearing heels, but you need to know when and where to wear them. Mm -hmm. So um, girls, don't wear them to like the hockey rink. Yeah. No men are going to care about your shoes there. Don't yeah. wear them to the Jersey Shore. No. Then we know you're from out of town. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, if you're going to wear them, you have to stick it out. There's nothing worse than seeing a woman carrying her heels at the end of the night. Yes. That is I a sign of defeat, <laughs> and you should not be defeated by your shoes. Oh, it's not a little clever turn of phrase. Defeated by your shoes. I didn't even know I. Punch. <laughs> I wanted to point it out. Andy, uh, this is shoe discrimination. What about flats? What about comfy shoes? It's unfair to them. Look, I, I love wearing heels, but you have to know where and when <laughs> yes. to wear them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I guess Joanne took your talking points yeah, again. Yeah, as usual. <laughs> um, I, look, I, women are more attractive in heels. Yes. And I think that's what the study showed. So yes. basically the study showed what we already makes know. Tight. Yeah, I don't know. Really <laughs> it makes everything tight. Was this in Duh magazine? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea, yeah. Duh magazine. Because I'd still read it on the plane. Yeah, this really did happen. Uh-huh, yeah, exactly. Okay, but you know what drives me crazy? The, the researchers, whenever they get to a conclusion like this, which is what you're, which is a duh conclusion, it's a biological thing, uh, 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 now, they will say it just shows that it's outside of our control it, uh, by culture. Like culture, it's because we watched yeah. movies. It was it wasn't the fact that we naturally are attracted to it as a biological it is thing. So like religious, this is like when I used to have to go to church. The kind of stuff like yeah. I can never escape this kind of yeah. religious faith and like. Uh, but th these kind of people believe everything's propaganda at all yeah. times. Yes. So they're always like, this is like you know the mediocre have to control the stupid. So they yeah. they're like, well, what are we putting out there as a message? Yeah. To this, I'm not affected by it. Of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're above stupid it. people. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Who watches for them? Just me. Yeah, exactly. I blame movies. So was this study done by a high heel shoe company? Because that's usually what we find out at the end of this. <laughs> Exactly. No, no, they did. But no, Andy will say, this whole study was oh, the fake. Whole fake. <laughs> the whole yeah. thing is the fake. Yeah. Yes, all right. Coming up, animals at weddings. Speaking of animals, do you have videos of them? You know what I mean. Videos of animals. You can send them to us, foxnews.com slash red eye. Clean animal videos. I don't want any sick stuff anymore. <laughs> What's going on here? I'll be on uh, the O'Reilly Factor uh, Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Oh, and now I know why. Because uh, Andy Levy will be on Lou Dobbs tonight. The show, not the actual person. You're not going to be on Lou Dobbs tonight, are you? Oh, yeah, That's right. disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox Business Network. Coming up tomorrow on the next Red Eye, we have Jedediah Bila and that guy. <laughs> e Blog. Last story. That's the last story. Just Josh and you, Buck Sexton. There's a best man and a beast, according to the Wall Street Journal, owned uh, by our parent company, White Castle. <laughs> Some people are now adding wild animals to their wedding ceremonies. This is just ridiculous <laughs> and wonderful. I don't know. Popular grunty guests include llamas and elephants. Why the two L's? I don't know. Said one groom, people will remember the wedding more because the llamas were there. <laughs> that is the greatest line ever. And also because you're weird. But is the spectacle special or cruel? Here's a tape of a guest arriving. I bet he won't forget that, huh? Uh, klutzy, but, uh, I don't know, sexy elephant? Yeah. I think so. What do you, uh, you know, Kurt, um, yeah. is a horse-drawn carriage just not cool enough anymore? Remember, we, those were the special flourishes one had. Right, right. Yeah, yeah if you were annoying. Well, I mean, if I get an invitation to a wedding, I go, oh, my God. So I can only imagine for an elephant how brutal that is. Uh, yeah. What do you some of these people. <laughs> How do they get to the registry? Is everybody Michael Jackson now? Why yeah, do that's <laughs> around you for everything. Yeah, you know, he started the whole wild animal fetish thing, you know, yeah. that ended with the woman getting her face ripped off by a monkey right. high on Xanax and wine. Or not enough Xanax. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I don't do that when I'm high. You're supposed to combine them. 
Yeah, you're not saying no. Well, you're not supposed to give them to a monkey, Joanne. If you were going to have an animal at a wedding, uh, what would it be? And you can't say Adam Levine. <laughs> uh, wild turkey. Bourbon and oh. bulldog gin. Whoa, aren't you clever? <laughs> I know. <laughs> really proud of that. No, I She's um, proud. I the only uh, I I just can't with these weddings anymore. It's like uh, the bar mitzvah parties and the sweet sixteen. Yes. You know everything has to be entertainment. You need the DJs and the spectacles. Yeah. They're famous people. She at did the, it for them. She yeah. said the uh, elephants made her calm. I think you should be able to do whatever you want at your wedding and nobody oh, can yeah. judge you. I want to walk. Home down the aisle to like a G6. Yeah. I think that's a better song and if people don't like it, they don't have to come. No, mm. it's not touching. What's a G6? Like a G6. Oh, like that. I think that'd be a great song. I think everyone <laughs> would have a good time. I don't even need any elephants and everyone would remember it. What's a G6? Uh, yeah, isn't it like a plane? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> all I want, all I'm happy it would be it was it's an open bar, Andy, yeah. and about 400 prostitutes. <laughs> what is that too much to ask for a wedding? I, I don't what, think so. Look, um, I, first of all, this is fake. <laughs> all those this is the Wall Street Journal. All How those dare you? pictures were photoshopped. None of those people are actually married. They're crisis wedding actors. <laughs> crisis <laughs> wedding. Uh, I think I will, as always, I will root for the llamas and or elephants to go wild and yes. destroy the wedding. Yeah. Right. Well, that's going to happen. It's going to take yeah, one bad should. llama. And it one, should. It's going to be like a Planet of the Apes when they finally learned how to talk. Yeah. The, the, the animals at the wedding are going to go, what are we doing because here? Because let's face it, at wedding, like, most of the time, toasts at weddings suck. Yes. And these poor elephants have to remember that toast forever. Yes. Oh, that why? is not cool. <laughs> yeah. Why would you want people paying attention to the animals at your wedding? Maybe you want something fatter than the bride. I would want... <laughs> Terrible. Pay attention to only me at the wedding. I want to have like a strict no makeup policy for all the guests, so everyone looks ugly except yeah. for me. You know. It's um, about you. It's a thing. It's a it's a thing to make your wedding memorable, but you shouldn't make it memorable. You should want to make it last, right? Like right. like like weddings where people try to make it memorable almost always end in divorce. Yeah, because that's what annoying people do. Exactly. That's the people They're who take the engagement lights. engagement photos. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Repulsive because they don't animals. have money for their bills or their mortgage because they just spent it all. Uh, yeah. We really it's almost those. as bad as the weddings on the beaches. Yes, I was going to say that. Yeah. White linen, barefoot yeah. beaches, yeah. Oh, those never God. work out. Trust uh, me. Well, they Usually like third weddings. So yeah, that's weddings the thing. Exactly. Like and then the and then the bride kills the groom. Right. Uh, he, well, he just disappears yeah, and into she's, a volcano. Yes. Like that. I hope that happens. Mm -hmm. All right. You performing anywhere soon? Yeah, at uh, Foxwoods, uh, December four through six, and then uh, season three, Inside Amy Schumer is coming out soon. So I'll be on that. Excellent. All right. Very special thanks to Catherine Timph. You can catch her at National Review, right? Yeah, and on the internet. TV's Andy Levy, Joanne, Kurt Metzger. That does it for me. I'm Greg Gutfeld. See you next time. Bye.